today we're going to take a look at this argyle stitch. Now, a traditional argyle stitch uses a intarsia or color blocking technique, but this one's a little simpler. We're just using two colors and we're using a fair isle or stranded knitting technique. So I'm going to take you through how to do that step by step. So let's move this swatch aside and take a look at the chart. Now, most fair isle patterns have us working from a chart. There are also written instructions for this pattern. Um, if you prefer to look at the written instructions rather than the chart. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how to read this chart. Now this chart represents the right side of the work. So it's as if you're looking at your knitting this way. We're seeing the front. That means that we're reading the chart on the right side rows from right to left. So this is my first stitch. Each square represents one stitch. And on the wrong side rows, I'm starting over here and reading from left to right. So an easy way to remember that is if I'm looking at the right side of my work, I'm ready to work a right side row, I'm, I'm knitting my stitches from right to left, just as they're represented here. And then if I keep my work facing, the right side facing, the wrong side row, once I've knit all the way over here, would be worked this way. I mean, I, I would be turning the work, but just represented on the chart, it would be going from left to right. If someone was facing you while you're doing a wrong side row, that's the order in which your stitches are being worked. So as I said, one square represents one stitch, and then the symbols, if we look at the key, this pattern is working stocking stitch, so the gray squares represent one of my colors with my contrast A. I'm knitting on right side rows, purling on wrong side rows. And then the white squares represent my contrast C color. And the same, I'm knitting on right side rows, purling on wrong side rows. And then we just have a different um, symbol over here for purl stitches because I have a garter stitch border on either side. It's a 16 stitch repeat. And that's what I have on my swatch here just to demonstrate, but you could repeat these 16 stitches again and again to make a wider piece. So let's start knitting our argyle stitch. And I'll show you how to work with these two colors. Now these two colors are attached at all times. You're not cutting in between. So you'll have two balls of yarn attached to your work at all times. So my border is just worked in my contrast C, which is yellow right here, and I'm just going to knit that. Oops. And now I'm going to begin. So that was my three stitches of C right here in the border, and now I'm going to begin my pattern. So I've got one gray square here. That's my contrast A. So I'm going to drop just leave alone my yellow yarn and pick up the gray for the next stitch. I'm not going to do anything fancy there. I'm just going to knit the next stitch and then drop the gray. And now I need to pick up my yellow to work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. So I'm just going to pick up my other color and knit seven stitches. Another thing to note when you're working with two colors in this stranded technique is that you never really want to carry your float across too many stitches. Now a float is what we see on the back here. When I switch colors, I'm carrying the other yarn across the work each time. And if the floats are too long, if that strand of the opposite color is too long, it can catch on things. So I'm going to show you how to trap that. You never really want to carry over more than five stitches. So we're working seven here. I'm going to work the first half of the stitches roughly. I've worked three. And then just so that I don't get, when I pick up the gray again, after seven stitches, it would be way over here and I'd have this long strand. So I'm going to just 
bring my gray over the yellow and then pick up and knit the rest of my stitches with the yellow. And you'll see what that does. I have four more stitches of the seven. One, two, three, four. And I've just trapped the gray yarn with my yellow. So we'll do that again later on so that you can, you can get a better idea there. So I've worked seven stitches in my yellow, then I need one in gray, and then another seven stitches in yellow. So to switch colors, like I said before, if we're not working more than five stitches, you don't have to worry too much. You just leave the one color and then pick up the gray. Now you can see the gray is over here, but we're just gonna pull it across and don't pull too tightly, leave it loose. Take some practice to get the right kind of tension, but if I pull too tightly, my work is gonna bunch in on the front. And if I leave it too loose, I'm gonna have long strands or loops on the back that can catch on things. So it just takes a little practice to get that tension just right. And if you block your piece at the end, it can you know, really work out some of those inconsistencies in your tension. So I worked my one stitch in gray, and now I'm gonna work seven more in the yellow. So I'm just dropping the gray, picking up the yellow, and just as I did before, because I'm working more than five stitches, I'm gonna knit roughly the first half of the stitches. So I'm doing three here. It doesn't really matter, I could do four or five. And then dropping the yellow yarn, picking up the gray, just laying it over the yellow, yellow piece so that I'm trapping it. And then I'll knit the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. And that's the end of my 16 stitch repeat. And then I'm working my garter border just in the yellow. So that's row one on the right side. And things are worked relatively the same on the wrong side. You can see the wrong side's got all these strands that we've carried across. So I'm gonna begin row two. Now, these look like purl stitches. They will look like purl stitches on the right side, but this says purl on right side rows, knit on wrong side rows. I'm on a wrong side row, so this symbol represents for me three Oh, actually, I should be working from over here because I'm on the wrong side row. I'm working from left to right. So these three stitches on either side are actually knit stitches when I'm working on the wrong side. So I'm going to knit three stitches. And then my chart tells me I need to work one stitch in the gray. And because I'm on the wrong side row, this is a purl stitch. So I'm just gonna bring my yarn to the front, my yellow yarn to the front, because I know that for the rest of this row, until I get to the border, I'm gonna be purling. And I wanna carry those strands across the wrong side of the work. So if I left my strand over here, when I knit the gray and then pick up the yellow again, my working yarn's gonna be on the wrong side of the work. So just bring your yarn to what is the back of the work, what's facing you now. Then I'm going to work my first purl stitch in the gray. So now my strand is coming over from the left, but it's essentially the same as when we were working in the front. You don't want to pull it too tightly. I'm going to purl that stitch. And you can see I've got the gray strand is coming over these three stitches here. Then I'm just going to drop my gray pick up my yellow and I have one, two, three, four, five stitches to work in the yellow. So because it's five, I don't need to worry about trapping the yarn like we did in the front on that row one. Two, three, four, 
five. Now I've got one gray, one yellow, one gray. So I'm just gonna drop, drop the yellow yarn, pick up the gray yarn, pull one stitch. Drop the gray yarn, pick up the yellow yarn, purl one stitch. Drop the yellow yarn, pick up the gray yarn, purl one stitch. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five in yellow. And you can see how most people prefer working from the chart when they're doing these color work patterns because it really is a representation, a visual representation of the stitches. There's my five yellow, now I finish off with two of the gray. And one thing to note, I'm always picking up this yarn and bringing it over the yellow yarn instead of under. It's just, you get neater floats on the back if you're consistent with that always under or always over. I, I find over easier. So I've purled my last two stitches of my pattern. And now because my last three stitches are knit stitches, I'm gonna bring that yarn to the front, or to the back of what's facing me, but it's actually the front of the work is on the other side, the right side of the work, I should say, and knit those three stitches. see on the front, this is still my nice smooth knit stitches. I've got my garter stitch border. Let's just work one more right side row to practice what we've learned here. So my garter stitch border, now I'm on row three, three knit stitches. Now I've got three in gray and then three in yellow, so I'm going to drop my yellow yarn, pick up my gray. One, two, three, gray. Drop the gray yarn, pick up the yellow. One, two, three. Then I have one gray three yellow, one gray, three yellow. One gray, three yellow. One gray, and three yellow. And you can see I like to just pull on the stitches just spread them out a little bit as I'm working in this stranded knitting technique, just to avoid having tight floats across the back. If my stitches are all bunched up, it's pretty easy to pull your yarn across too tightly. So I like to just spread them apart a little bit. Now I'm ending off with two gray, dropping yellow, picking up the gray, and then knitting. my last three stitches in yellow. And again, when you turn your work and you're working on the wrong side row, with this garter stitch border, you just need to remember, once I've worked the first three stitches of my border, to bring that yellow working yarn to the front side, to what's facing me, which is the wrong side of the work, but it's the front just so that when I have to purl a stitch over here, my yarn's in the right spot. So that's about it for working our Fair Isle Argyle pattern in two colors. It's a really simple and effective way to get this cool diamond pattern without having multiple bobbins and all the things that go with the color block technique. And that's all you need to know.